Hey, Jet, how's it going, man? You guys hear me okay? All right. What's up, brother? How's the sound? How's the sound? How's the quality? Everything all right? Yo, Dennis, what's going on? Cool, man, cool. So I had this uh, this whole live stream all set up, ready to go once the uh, once it turned on. Uh, it didn't work. I had a picture ready to go, and it was supposed to be fine, but uh, we're having trouble, and uh, it didn't automatically start, so I had to start another one. But I'm glad you guys can join up. What's up, Jim? Oh. So I hope you guys all brought a cold one with you. I got one. We can uh, get some, get a little bit of work done and uh, have a brewing chat. <clears throat> so for you guys are just uh, the early birds, we're going to be making some clay targets today. Uh, I've got a few of them already made, been sitting around, not really doing much, but uh, these little clay guys, and I made this uh, this little hook, should be pretty easy to, uh, to slide onto a string, I don't know if you can see that all right, but should slide on the string, and my theory is that once we hang the, uh, once we hang the targets on there, we'll be able to smoke these guys into little bits and uh, and shoot pretty fun with it. I was hoping that light back there was going to be a little bit better, but uh, it's not so good. It's got a lot of bright brightness to it. Maybe the next time we do this, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, cover that up with a blanket or something, trying to get rid of some of that black light, the back light. Hey, Martin, how's it going? Simon. Hey, welcome from the UK. Thanks, thanks for showing up in Canada, here, bud. That's awesome. Yeah. See if I can turn this down just a little bit. Now, this is my first time ever doing one of these guys, so hopefully uh, hopefully it's coming out okay. But uh, what's everybody shooting today? What's going on, man? Titan Hunter. Yeah, I was actually shooting my first slingshot today. My first flat band slingshot today. That uh, that one from, uh, well, it was my first video ever, actually. It was that one from, um, the hell was it called? I can't even remember what it was called now. But uh, anyway, yeah, I was shooting that guy today, kind of reminiscing. Uh, we just hit uh, 100,000 views on that, on that video, guys. My first video I ever did with a slingshot. And it uh, it rocked out a hundred thousand views already on that uh, on that uh, on that video. It was pretty cool. Couldn't believe it actually. But uh, yeah, it's that top archery uh, professional slingshot there. That the little red the little red fella there. Yeah, I was shooting that guy today, having a little fun. What's my favorite slingshot? Oh, is the sound too loud? Uh, DS uh, Field Sports. Maybe I'm yelling at you. I'm all excited. My favorite slingshot. That's a tough one to say. I've got a few of them that I like quite a bit. Give you a look at what's going on here. I've got a few slingshots that I really, really like. Uh, Titan Hunter is really definitely at the top of my list. Uh, the Beagle from Prime 4 Catapults. Another awesome one. The uh, the Wasp Venator is another fantastic slingshot. Uh, to pick only one is almost impossible. The Evo is another one. The Evo is another great uh, great slingshot, and uh, 
I can pretty much switch back and forth between all of those uh, whenever I want, and uh, I'm good pretty much. But the uh, the Titan Hunter was actually the first slingshot that I ever had that uh, I had realized that the 90 mil, that 90 millimeter uh, spot was, was it for me. Uh, that really made a big difference in my shooting and my accuracy for where I was anchoring and uh, made a big difference in how I shoot. There's a lot of people that will say that um, – a lot of people that will say that a slingshot doesn't make a shooter. And uh, that's a, I agree and I disagree with that. The reason why is because however it is that you shoot your slingshot, you could be shooting one that's just doesn't fit. I, I consider uh, slingshots like shoes. They're, uh, they're pretty good. They, uh, the, you know, if it fits, you got a you got a great slingshot, but if it doesn't fit, you know you could buy you know Nikes or or whatever whatever shoes are the hot topic of the day, but you buy one of those and it doesn't fit well. Well, it's pretty much a shitty pair of shoes. And I, I believe slingshots to be the same. Yeah, Titan Hunter is a sweet frame. So. A while back, I bought this box. It's like uh, 10 pounds of clay. Here, I'll show you real quick. Pick this up off of Amazon. Air dries. And the whole plan was to make clay ammo. And, uh, well, I don't know who it is that's sitting down rolling up these little balls for clay ammo, but uh, they really didn't come out good. Mole trapping. Uh, nope, never. I have done uh, I have done some um, my favorite band make. Hmm. Well, there's a few of them out there that I like right now that I'm shooting quite a bit. Sniper Sling, it's right up there at the top of the list. The uh, the yellow model. I haven't tried the black yet. Sniper Sling is really really nice. Thing I like about Sniper Sling is the uh, the thing I like about Sniper Sling is, is that the, the draw weight is super, super comfortable. It's not a really stiff draw weight. You can pull it back. You can hold it if you need to. Uh, very comfortable and, uh, and very smooth. And uh, really all that stuff makes a big difference when it comes down to accuracy. You don't want to have a real uh, stiff or chunky or clunky uh, band, band pull. I, I, I don't like it anyway. It's just my, um, just my opinion. But some other ones that I really like, uh, Gong Chi White. Uh, you can get that off of Caddyshack Catapults. Um, you've got... Uh, uh, actually, a Sumki, I think that's how you pronounce it. I've been shooting that 0 0.50. Those are pretty quick bands, uh, and I'm kind of enjoying them. How's it going, Diego from Germany? Yeah, I'm still using Precise from time to time. Uh I think my favorite uh, model of all the precise is probably 0.65. In terms of heavy bands, that's probably the way I go. Points, uh, 0.65 precise is probably my favorite. That's what I was shooting today. Top archery, buddy. You have the same one? Uh, yep, yeah, I'm on Facebook. Uh, just search up Adventure Time Outdoors. That's my channel page, and uh, I do a lot of uh, I do all my posting off there. My personal one, I don't I don't bother with at all, really. Yeah, bud, I'm a Guinness fan. <laughs> what are all you? What do you guys? Uh, what, what bands do you guys like shooting? <laughs> Guaranteed, I'll have more fun smashing them than making them 
That's for sure. I figured it would make a good uh, slow uh, slow mo Sunday uh, video. We can uh, set up the camera real close and watch these things blowing up all over the place. Should be fun. Yeah, I started for uh, for targets instead, only because I tried rolling up little balls, and once they've dried, it was like I was shooting boomerangs. They kept on. Uh, curving and swinging around i couldn't hit a damn thing with them so i figured if we're gonna if we're gonna have some fun out of it we're gonna go ahead and make some uh make some clay targets and uh and at least get the break stuff it's always fun so please tell me guys i'm not the only one having a beer here is anybody else having one Will I make any more 20 meter meter shooting? Absolutely, that's the goal this summer. I want to improve my long distance range. Uh, after watching uh, Kilevella do do his shooting, man, that guy's such an inspiration. He shoots. I don't know if you saw that the video he did recently where he shot two bottle caps, uh, two 30 mil bottle caps uh, from 20 meters out. Man, the, the, the guy's the guy's accuracy is legendary. So yeah, I will be uh, I will be uh, shooting those pretty soon, and uh, doing a little bit more, a little bit more practice at twenty meters. That's for sure. Anybody else try making their own clay tar targets? Yo, Mo, what's up, brother? Yep, I've got the Evo. The Evo is one of my one of my favorite uh, my favorite shooters too. I put it definitely in my top five. Oh, nice. Uh, you know what? I gotta get some simple shot black and give those a test too. I've heard really good things about them. But the ones I've received uh, with the slingshots, I can't stand them. I feel like it's shooting like a, a uh, you know, an inner tube or something. But uh, I would like to actually have them set up uh, the way I like it and see how it goes. Hey, Mo, good to hear from you too, brother. Good to hear from you. I'm on vacation. <laughs> yeah. So I got some good news. Yeah, so I got some good news. We've got uh, I've got a couple of frames coming in the mail today. Uh, if it arrives while we're doing this, uh, I'll definitely show them to you. We'll do an unboxing. We'll add that to the fun. But um, I got two more frames coming in from uh, from uh, Prime Fork. My buddy Andre made uh, made two nice uh, frames for me. One of them is a uh... <laughs> hey, you got to start somewhere, Pine. Let me tell you. You got to start somewhere. It was just, it was actually a, a little over, a little over a year ago today that I actually started shooting slingshots on a, on a regular basis. Um, that first video I did, I made it two years ago. And that was the first time I ever held, I ever held a, a flat band slingshot in my hand before until, uh, until I received that guy. And then I went through my two bands and I didn't know where to get bands from. So I put it away and then I started again the next year when I got my, when I got my scout and my, uh, and my, uh, my hammer pro from GZK. Once I got those, I just couldn't, I couldn't stop. Yeah, man, just one year, just one year shooting, shooting regularly. Really that first video that I did was, uh, That first video that I shot, um, I did. I started this channel, and I actually kind of forgot about it. I did that one video just to see how it would go, 
and I forgot about it. And when I came back, it had like 10,000 views on it. I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. So I decided to, uh, to um, you know, dabble in it some more. I had such a fun time. But what would I say? On my top three slingshots? Top three, top five. They're all pretty much uh, interchangeable. Uh, Titan Hunter, Wasp Venator, um, Prime Fork Beagle, and the uh, and the Evo. I I love all those frames pretty much equally. I can shoot at any any one of those at any time and have a great time. Um, I just recently I got that uh, I got that um, just recently I got that uh, pocket thumper from uh, Island Made catapult, Catapults. And uh, that one's uh, quickly climbing to the top of the list too. That's another sweet, a sweet frame. Just got to get a little bit, a little bit more, a uh, little more uh, used to uh, shooting that one, and I'm sure it's going to reach that top of the list too. Awesome frame. Yeah, man. UK, you guys got it down, man. You guys make some sweet slingshots. <laughs> All right, Trevor, what are you having, bud? This guy here? Found those on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. I believe it was 10 pounds. Yeah, 10 pounds. I think it cost like 18 bucks. Ooh. Speckled hen. Never heard of it. Bet you it's good. Hey, so you guys over at the UK, hopefully I'm not, uh, I'm not disturbing your dinner. Sorry right, guys, now that I got you all here. Favorite slingshot. Go. What's the dark horse out there that nobody knows about? What was in this glass? Absolutely nothing. Or this one. This uh, this was a glass that I got from um from uh I don't know what you call it. We you know when you go to a place and they have a whole bunch of beer tasting place and uh well, it's just too damn small, so I use it to, uh, to to make clay targets now. And this was a little shot glass we had floating around in here, and that's all I'm using. Nothing in there. I like my beers in a can anyway. So just yesterday, in the mail, I got some. Uh, I got a a smoker in the mail yesterday, and I was just thinking, you know, it might be fun. Yeah, I got you, Mo. <laughs> no, it might be fun. I picked up a smoker just yesterday, got it all set up onto the deck, and uh, I was thinking we could do some uh, some smoking and slinging videos. Where we just uh, put an ass whooping on a bunch of stuff while we got some good meat and good meat cooking on the grill, and we have a little, uh, a little, uh, a little dinner at the end, maybe a cold pop. Yeah, Jackie, I tried making clay ammo, and I really had no luck with it. And they they came out kind of weird shaped, and they they didn't fly very nice. They caused me lots of trouble, and uh, I actually um, I mentioned this a while back about about shooting clays. If your clays are not, uh, they're not in perfect shape, perfect, perfectly round, and they're causing you trouble, I do recommend if you're a new shooter just to stay away from them. They may cause you to uh, to make corrections on stuff that you don't really need corrections for because it was the actual it was the actual projectile sending your ball off in weird in weird uh, in weird directions and not your form. 
And uh, I found that I had a little bit of trouble this winter because I've been shooting a lot off the deck. And uh, when I decided to start shooting some targets again, I was uh, shooting all over the place. And it was, uh, I was like, what the hell is going on? How come I'm, I'm shooting left now all of a sudden? And uh, it caused me a bit of trouble. So I would probably recommend uh, just staying away from it if you have an option to do so. But if not, you have to be really critical of your, of your, of your shooting and your form because uh, there's a good chance that you may try to correct something that doesn't need correcting. Oh, nice. Anybody have a dream frame out there? Something they would like to, uh, to draw, to, to buy that's at the top of their list? No, I didn't. I got a uh, the smoker that I got was a um, was a pit boss. It's a a 700, 700 RF or something like that. I think that's what it's called. But it's a pit boss smoker, pellet grill. Should be a lot of fun. What kind of clay? I don't know. It's just air dry clay. Have a look. This is the box. Got it off of Amazon. Reasonably priced, all natural clay, it says. Oh, you better believe it. I'll make a video shooting these things. I'm thinking of slow mo Sundays if we watch them blow up. Maybe we could stack a few of them and see how many clays it takes to actually uh, to stop a bullet <laughs> or stop a shot. Could be fun. I may actually need to go out and get some paint for these things. So my eyes are terrible. And seeing these uh, these darker colored things from a far distance is going to be kind of tough. I actually should be wearing glasses, to be honest. But uh, I kind of gave up on that. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Oh, you can see a little bit of my face there. Is that better? Yeah, see, for me, the up and down was an issue. Uh, and the left and right, I usually shot pretty, pretty nice and straight. But the up and down was... Uh, was a, a little bit of an issue. Sometimes I would, uh, sometimes I would shoot a little bit low. Uh, usually overnight, I just leave these. Uh, I leave these guys overnight, and uh, and it dries right out. Yeah, I should be wearing my glasses, but you know how it is. Yep, it does lighten when it dries. Becomes uh becomes almost like a gray color kind of. Like a like this reddish gray color. Oh, come on, like this. Does that help at all, guys? A little bit of light in the subject? Mm. Yep, I think it could be fun uh, doing that... Uh, how did my slingshot shooting start? Well, when I was a kid, I used to have one of those, uh, we used to call them the marksman, 
basically we have this store up here in Canada called Canadian Tire. And uh, I think every kid probably my age had one of these things. It was like, uh, it has like a little arm brace and it has two wires that come up and a hook with a hammer style grip and uh, it shot tubes. So that's where I had as a kid, we used to have paintball wars in the woods behind my house. So I lived right around the corner, uh, right across the street from the woods. And I spent most of my time in there. But uh, anyway, we used to have paintball wars inside there. And we, me and my buddies would go in, dress up in army clothes and shoot each other. But uh, uh, maybe maybe the last time I picked up a slingshot before last year was probably in uh, like 1984 or something. 84, 85. Yeah, it was just before high school where I stopped shooting, stopped shooting a slingshot. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a wrist rocket, I guess. Uh, uh, up here we used to, there were Daisy or called Marksman, uh, the ones we had, but they were the same thing as a wrist rocket. And anyway, uh, I shot those for the longest time. My son was asking me what I did for fun when I was a kid, and I told him about that. And, uh, I went online to show them what a slingshot looked like, and let me tell you, they look totally different. So uh, we started looking around, and I saw this, uh, I saw that tarp archery slingshot online. I think it was AliExpress. Maybe it was Amazon I bought it from. I can't even remember. No, it was Amazon. And uh, I ordered it. And when it came, we started shooting in the backyard. And, uh, well, I had we had such a good time with it. But when the bands broke, I didn't know what to do anymore, if, uh, if you can buy the bands or how to get them or what, what the deal was. So I ended up, uh, I ended up um, just putting it on the shelf for the, for, the, uh, for the rest of the summer and the winter. And then once February rolled around, we were like, uh, well, what are we going to do? You know, COVID's hitting. There's not much going on. And uh, anyway, I, uh, I ordered, I ordered uh, the Scout LT, and I ordered the um, – uh, the Hammer Pro from GZK. We ordered two good slingshots, one for me, one for him. And uh, anyway, it just took off from there. I fell in love with the sport. It was so much fun. And uh, that was it. But just to be fair, before before I started off with a slingshot, I did shoot archery. I joined an archery club, but ended up quitting because there was way too many people in there. Everyone was... Uh, you had like five guys per target, and you try to shoot. People are bumping into you and talking in your in your back and in, in your in your in your draw. And I had enough, and I quit. I, I lost my shit a little bit, and uh, that was it. But before the archery, I used to shoot. Uh, I used to shoot uh, handgun and rifle as well. We uh, we used to be shooters in my house back in the day, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. So shooting things and being sarcastic is kind of like my superpower, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do I think there'll be any uh, competitive shoots uh, in the U.S. this year? I have no idea. Um, I'm actually hoping to see if I can uh, find one in um, find one in Canada and have some fun. How's it going, Andy? Uh, has have some fun uh, and try out and see see how bad I do, but uh, or how good maybe. See how good it is going to be. It's lots of fun, and I'm hoping I'm hoping I could find some uh, either in. Uh, Northeastern United States or anywhere in Canada, really. Dragon Emperor. Yes, I've heard of it. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, actually. I think uh, I think they sell it on uh, slingshooting.com if, if we're thinking about the same one. Hey, so you guys in the UK, you guys really like your slingshots, eh? It's like a it's like a big thing over there, right? Eh? What sizes am I making? Uh, I believe this guy is probably somewhere around 30 mil. And this one's around four and a half to five mil. If you could see the, if you could see the difference there. Ah, from Scotland. That's where my wife's from. My wife's a Scot.
Yeah. I'll tell you guys, there's been a couple of times where I've, I got myself a nice new a nice new frame. And uh, let me tell you, the sweat start hitting you a little bit because you're afraid you're going to you're gonna <laughs> frame hit it. There's a couple of times it's happened. I think the worst of, of them all was probably my Evo. I know I had a bunch of people comment on that. Hey, you framed it, your Evo. But uh, that was just me being absolutely stupid. I had, uh, when I shot that video or the review, I was tearing it up in the woods with that thing. I felt like I couldn't miss. And uh, sure enough, I started throwing things up in the air and trying to pop them out of the air. And uh, I hit the first one. But then every single other one after that, I framed hit. And I did it like three times in a row. And I was so pissed at myself, I should have just stopped while I was ahead. Yeah, I got one. Woo but nope. Yeah, I think I think those frame hits happen to the best of us sometimes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you when I got that uh, when I got that frame from um, from my buddy Shane, the uh, the Island Made Catapults uh, pocket thumper. When I took that thing out, I mean, it was such a beautiful frame, and the work that he did on it was just fantastic. I was sweating a little bit, uh, hoping that I don't uh, hoping that I, that I don't blow that thing up. Oh, I've done a bunch of card cutting, bro. I've got uh, I've got one video where I cut. Uh, I cut one. I cut three cards in the same video, with three different, three different frames, and uh, two different styles. So I cut a card with the Titan Hunter, and then I cut one with the Evo, and then I cut one with the Scout LT, but in Butterfly. Huh. Every time I've had a frame hit, I've uh, I've always noticed it had something to do with uh, with my release. It was me uh, doing something stupid with my release. It's always been uh, been that issue. Where I uh, I had a bit of a speed bump in it. I was rushing, trying to get the shot off, and that's always been my uh, my Achilles healer. Hey, so I wanted to ask you guys, how are you guys liking those uh, those band testing uh, those band testing uh, vids? I hope they're not becoming a little bit monotonous now. You know, doing the same thing over and over and over again. If you guys are enjoying them, I'll keep on doing them. It's just hard to get outside right now. It's minus twenty eight out my out my area, minus twenty eight Celsius with the wind chill. Pretty nasty out there. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys are liking those uh, those band testing vids. But uh, you know what? I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a crony testing vid also. I have a bit of a theory on uh, on the speeds going through the crony that uh, may be interesting for you guys. I've uh I was talking with somebody today and we were just chatting about uh, about the bands and band tests and whatnot and. <clears throat> It got me thinking a little bit about how how a projectile accelerates over a certain amount of uh, distance, for example. So I'm kind of wondering if if the crony is a foot away from the end of the forks when I let that projectile go, if I, I get a speed, if I back that crony up again, say 10 feet, and then I shoot it again, what's the speed going to be? And then if I back it up one more time to, say, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, 15 feet or 20 feet. Uh, I want to see if the if it if, if the projectile is starting to slow down or if it's still picking up speed. Because a lot of these band tests that we've been doing are catching them out, catching them right off the frame and not uh, 
and not, uh, you know, say a, a midway point. Might be interesting to test out. Maybe we could do that video too if you guys are interested. Hey, hello from Sweden. I got to tell you guys, that's the one great thing about uh, about YouTube and uh, social media as a whole. makes the world a lot smaller. I get to meet some, meet some awesome people like you guys. Hmm. Starting to run out of room here. Maybe we can uh, wiggle this over a little bit more, get another sheet down. So I've got a uh, another Casper coming, and I got another Beagle coming. Should be a lot of fun. Check those out. Uh, they've got a new version of the Beagle for those of you who like that frame. And uh, there's also some uh, some changes done to the Casper as well. We'll have a look at that uh, when they come in. We'll check them out and see. Come on over here. Here, duck on down. Hey guys, this is Logan. It's my son. Say hi to everybody, Logan. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So he's on spring break. And uh, hopefully as soon as this cold weather kind of dies back a little bit, we can get outside and do some shooting. should be fun. How many frames do I have? Woo. I don't know. Uh, somewhere around 30, I'm thinking. Yeah, somewhere around 30, I guess. I think I'll do a. I think I'll do a video uh, pretty soon on uh, on my collection where it stands today. We could do uh, we could do another um, another update video down the line when when I have some more come in. So I'm curious, guys. How many of you? Uh, what's what's your fork width uh, preference? How many of you guys shoot a uh, a fork with um, regularly. You like to stick to one, or do you, you flip flop back and forth? No, I got somewhere around thirty frames, bro. <laughs> I've got a major problem. <laughs> yeah, not all of them were bought. Some of them were made by me, but uh, I got a bunch of them. Yeah, uh, ninety mil is my favorite too. Eighty-five, ninety mil. I shoot those the best. Yeah, that's what I have too. I have the medium Titan Hunter. Great frame. So anyway, guys, I got a bit of an announcement coming. It's not going to be today, but uh, I think probably Thursday. I think I'm going to swing on back here uh, and do another another one of these vids, and uh, we can uh, chat about whatever. But I have a feeling uh, you guys are going to like what's coming. Should be pretty fun and interesting for you guys, and good for me too. So we'll see how it, how it turns out, but. Uh, I think you guys will like it. I think it's time for a little bit of a celebration for that uh, that hundred thousand views that we got there. The way the channel's going, couldn't do it without you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> I'm not spilling no beans, brother. You're gonna have to watch and wait. I'll be back Thursday. Uh, the Titan Hunter, brother, you have to, if you want to get a hold of that, you got to send Chris Graffin uh, and, uh, a message on um, on a Facebook Messenger. Shoot him a message, and uh, he'll talk to you about, uh, about what size you want and uh, what colors and whatnot, and he'll set it up. But that's the only way to get a hold of one of those. You have to uh, order them directly from Chris over in Ireland. Oh, no. Nice, you took all that time off and you were able to get back on target, no problem. That's awesome. 
Yeah, I do want to try the Hunter Classic, but I'm thinking about getting that new one he's got uh, that's uh, being sold from uh, Pro Shot Catapult. It's the, the Titan Pro. I really like that one. Yeah, I think the only thing that rivals my slingshot for my slingshot um, collection is probably my knife collection. I've got a lot of knives. How did you cut yourself like that, dude? That's crazy. Sorry about that, guys. I'm shaking you around. Ugh. Yeah, my elbow straight. My elbow straight, uh, for sure. The only thing that I do is uh, what I discovered when I was uh, shooting archery is that, let's say, for example, these are my feet. When I'm shooting, I always tend to take my front foot and I turn it up to a 45. It gives me a little bit more distance and it gives my, 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 my forks kind of an appearance of being a little bit longer. It, uh, it helps me get my, get my angle a little bit better than having my feet pointing perfectly straight. I used to do that uh, to eliminate uh, forearm slap. I, I refused to use one of those little things when I was shooting uh, shooting archery, and I, I discovered that just moving my foot out just that little bit made it made enough room for the for the string to pass. But it also makes your your forks uh, seem to stick out a little bit longer too. Works out great. The only thing you have to worry about though is if you're going to be shooting like that. You have to calculate that into your uh, into your draw length because it will shorten your draw length a little bit. Oh man, that's a bad accident. What grip do you guys prefer? Thumb brace, finger brace, pinch grip? Hammer style? What do you guys like? <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> so I do have a, uh, a pretty cool trip planned for this summer. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, for me, too, I'm, I'm more of a thumb brace guy, but it really depends on the frame. Uh, my Scout LT, I like to shoot pinch. And... Uh, all my, my goblet style frames, I like to shoot uh, with a thumb brace. Uh, it seems to work out great for me. Chalice frames, too, I like with a thumb brace. Hey, how's it going, Dave? <clears throat> yeah, that was no good.
Yeah, so I got a pretty cool trip uh, planned for uh, this spring. Hopefully, hopefully you guys will want to see the video. Um, me and my buddy. I don't know if you, if you guys have seen some of my camping videos. A uh, buddy of mine and I are gonna hike out in the wilderness to this uh, fishing spot. We're not even sure if it's a. Uh, oh, how much snow is still here? Oh, buddy. We just got another foot of snow just uh, earlier on this week, uh, maybe Friday or Saturday. It was, it just won't stop, man. I'm telling you, it just won't stop. When I'm walking on my driveway, the snow is higher than my head on both sides. Just to give you an idea. Tons of snow. And it was starting to warm up this week and it was uh, started to melt on uh I guess uh, Saturday, Sunday started to melt, and then yesterday, yesterday the temperature dropped down to minus 18 again, and today it's minus 18, minus 28 with the wind chill. So, sucks. Which slingshots? You want to see a list of all all my collection? Is that what you're what you're asking for, Dave? Yeah, but I'm going to be doing that overnighter. It's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a couple couple kilometer hike into the into the wilderness and Crownland. We're going to spend the night uh, and do some fishing on a on a remote on a remote um, on a remote lake. And it should be a lot of fun. We're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna do some uh, some cooking, some fishing, some hiking, maybe a catch and cook if we're lucky enough to get some trout in the pan. And uh, I'll definitely be doing doing some sling shooting too. We'll set up. Uh, we'll set up some shots and have some fun. Should be a great time. Yeah, I mean, spring spring starts here soon, but it's uh, sometimes we get snow right into April, so it's hard to tell. I have about 30 frames, somewhere around there. Some I made, some I bought. Slingshot fishing time. I would love to do that, but I think it might be illegal in my area. I'll have to... Uh, I'll have to look into that and see if it's possible. I probably could do some bow fishing, though. I'll have to uh, look into the laws on that, too. What are we out? Well, I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping to get onto some brookies. We have a uh, brook trout in our area. But depending on the lake, some of the lakes are really, really deep, and we have uh, lake trout or grays, as we call them up here. So uh, mostly brook trout and um, and lake trout are what we find around here. We do have some. Uh, we do. I think it's. Um, we might have cutthroat trout, but they're much farther north. But brooks, brookies are uh, great eating fish. Hey, Kelavella, we're just talking about you, brother. How you doing? Man, we got people from everywhere, man. Finland, U.S., Europe, all over the place. It's awesome. What am I using to attach the bands to the pouch? Right now, I'm actually using a, um, I'm using the constrictor knot quite a bit lately. It's working out pretty good, nice and light. I've got a crap load of uh, uh, power cord uh, that I'm using the inner strands of. Works out fantastic. And uh, it's just stuff I got lying around. So I'm using a lot of the constrictor knot, and I'm moving farther and farther away. I'm moving farther and farther away from uh, uh, from those uh, that ribbon stuff there. I just don't. I just don't like it. I find it cuts into my it cuts into my bands. Oh man, trout are awesome.
me and my son used to go trout fishing almost every day right after school. He had a little pond that they used to stock. We used to go fishing there all the time. Hola, amigo. Yes, sir. Sniper Calavala is in the house. That's awesome, man. Whew. Starting to run out of space with all these guys. Look at this. Got a nice little collection going on here. Brother Martin, I just wish this COVID thing didn't happen, brother, because I would have been happy to go out on a trip with you, man, this year. It would have been fantastic. Me, me and my tank of a canoe, <laughs> you might have to wait around for me a little bit, but it would have been a blast. Maybe we could do it next year. By the way, guys, for those of you who uh, – who uh, are into the whole bushcraft thing. Mr. Pine Martin right here has got an excellent channel with a lot of good knowledge that he can share. You should go and check him out if you can. Oh, yeah, it'll be a great time. <laughs> I think you're a funny guy, Mr. Kelowala. <laughs> yeah, right. How old am I? I'm uh, 45 years old, as far as I can remember. <laughs> yeah, 45. Yeah, that would be pretty interesting, but I'd have to buy three cronies, and that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. But I think I will be doing a video pretty soon and seeing what the difference is um, we'll do, uh, say three shots from three different, uh, locations of the crony and see, uh, and see, um, what the point is where the ball actually starts to decrease in speed might be fun. Nope. I haven't ordered the hundred percent yet, but that is on the list and it's right at the top. The hundred percent bands are going to be tested very soon. As soon as I can get my hands on some. Just right now, a lot of a lot of the things coming out of uh, coming out of Europe to Canada has taken a hell of a long time to arrive here. So I think maybe what I'll do is I'll put in an order for it, and when it does arrive, we'll just do the video, test it out. What pouches are everybody using? I'm still loving those uh, those GZK pit locating pouches, but I've started uh, using the um, no man, they air dry. All you have to do is leave them leave them on your uh, on your counter or your table overnight or so, and uh, they're done. When I did all the uh, when I did all the ammo, they uh, they were they were rock hard overnight. 
these guys uh, will take a little bit longer, maybe a day and a half or so. Hey, good to see you, Martin. Uh, hope to see you again soon. I will be back at it again Thursday. Uh, I got a little bit of an announcement you might not want to miss. So I'll see, see if you could stop by. If not, I'll, uh, I'll shoot you a message. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Yeah, the targets are going to be fun. We got a Canada boy in the house. This is awesome. Oh, man, I bet it feels good. Chap ones. Haven't tried those yet. I'll have to check them out. Dude, the targets dissolve in the rain. I don't know. I try not to shoot in the rain. I find it's bad for my bands. But uh, anyway, oh, these will, will these will break down over time in the rain. Yes, they will. <laughs> really? I use this to drywall my house. <laughs> Take care, bud. Thanks for stopping in. My favorite pouches are the pink ones from GZK. Pink ones? I haven't even seen those. Do I shoot OTT or both? Well, I shoot OTT far better than I shoot TTF, but I do dabble in both. Although there was a time where I was uh, I was absolutely killing it with that... Uh, GZK, um, uh, which one was it? The GZK Crazy Power Mini with the uh, with the no tie version. I was absolutely destroying. I did a video on that. I think I hit eight out of ten calling my shots on uh, on three different uh, forty mil flippers, and uh, I was killing it, killing it with that frame. And then all of a sudden, I just lost a feel for it, and I started frame hitting it for some reason. I have to get back into it. I'm actually kind of excited to get that smoking and shooting thing going on once this weather starts to clear up a little bit and we can get into the backyard. It might be fun. I'm hoping we can uh, get some good food going, get some good shooting going. It might a little be a lot of fun. What's everybody got planned for this evening? I think some folks just uh, just um, naturally shoot better with one frame or the other. Uh, I, I don't know what the what the deal is, but uh, I'm definitely an OTT shooter. Yeah, buddy, pizza, pizza and the smoker, it'll be great. More beer, I'm in. All right, round two. <laughs> Go grab one, brother. We're all having a few pops here. Cool, bro. I'll see you Thursday, Andy. Thanks for stopping in.
Yeah, so for those of you guys who are, uh, came in a little bit late or later, this is the uh, little contraption I came up with. This is actually a piece of um, a piece of brass that I used uh, for making pins for knives when I used to make knives back in the day. But uh, I basically put a little twist in it. So when we put a string on it, it should just click onto the string and then hang like this. And my whole plan is to be able to make a bunch of these and then hook up targets on there. So they'll hang nice and straight and we'll be able to put an ass whooping on these things a little bit later uh, once they're all dry and ready to go. Should be a lot of fun. So I'm hoping to make probably around 10 of these. I just used a pair of vice grips, gave it a little twist and then bent the end and that was it. But it's a it's pretty durable and strong. Should take, should take a pretty good beating. And it'll fit both sides, both sizes of the targets that we got going on here. This one's about uh, four and a half centimeters, maybe five. And uh, these other guys here are three. Should be pretty cool. Yeah, I went. I went with that little twist, so just so we don't have to uh, run the line through, you just pull them on, and take them off. You know, like just like. Like slide them on like this, kind of, but uh, all the way through, obviously. Should work out good. And made out of brass, they should take a couple of frame, a couple of hits from uh, from the from the ammo anyway. Even if I do hit a little high. Yeah, you might be uh, better to start off with a little bit of a lighter band and work your way up. The uh, That's what we used to do in archery anyway. I, I got up to a 45-pound bow uh, shooting a recurve. And uh, to get there, I started off at 30 and went up. I went up in five-pound increments on my limbs. And then uh, once I got there, I was able to hold that. Uh, I was able to hold, my, hold to my anchor point for uh, a good uh, 10, 20 seconds before I started to get shaky. What's my favorite frame right now? Wow, I get asked. I ask that a lot. The the um, the thing is, I don't really have a favorite per se. I would definitely say uh, probably anything in my top five, which would be the uh, Titan Hunter, the Wasp Venator, the Evo, or uh, the Beagle. Uh, all of these are uh, are bang bang on frames for mine. I love them. Yeah, the bottle caps too. That works out fine too. Yeah. Same kind of principle. So I got a couple of ideas for vids coming up uh, once once we get a little bit of better weather. I want to see how many eggs it takes to stop to stop a slingshot uh, to stop a slingshot ammo, and uh, we can line them up all all up onto a little. Uh, onto a little piece of wood and just fire them through and see if we can get them to stop. i got a few ideas like that. It might be fun. We can see what the, what kind of stopping power uh, these things have. Oh, yeah, I got quite a few here, bud. I got the – there must be somewhere around 100 at least so far. Yeah, I got a I got a band um, a frame from uh, Nick Hagerty that uh, the forks are probably a little bit too small for me to I can't really shoot it um, I can't really shoot it uh, at a short draw at all uh, but that thing that thing came with uh, with a double theraband set on it and oh my god I felt like I was pulling back a truck trying to, to shoot that thing off it was crazy.
Cheers. Oh, you have a uh, beagle from Nick Haverty. Cool. Nick makes some great frames. He's a really talented guy. Yeah, just unfortunately the one that I bought was just way too small for me. I think I think the uh, I think the frame the frame width on that guy is something like uh, like sixty five or seventy. It's almost a pickle fork. It's really small. I started shooting the butterfly and I'm having a bit more success with it. But it's uh, a nice uh, wooden, like one of those multiplex uh, frames. Shoots real nice um, in butterfly, but not in a short draw. I can't shoot it at all short draw. Uh, what is the latest band I can get away with using 10 millimeter lead? Ooh, I don't know. I've never shot lead before, bro. Without losing stopping power. I don't know shooting ten millimeter lead, but you, you're going to need some uh, you're going to need some stank on those bands. That's for sure. You might want to start playing with your taper first. You might find it'll it'll uh, lighten up your draw weight a little bit. You might be able to light up your draw uh, uh, lighten up your draw weight a little bit, but still be able to drop game with it. Yeah, but let me tell you, I uh, I got um, what's it called a uh, PFTS or something like that from uh, I have a I have a tube shooter from uh, from Prime Fork. Uh, I've been trying to get my head wrapped around how tubes uh, shoot and getting the getting the right the right speed out of the bands. And I don't think maxing out tubes is a good idea. I don't think I don't think you get the right speed out of them. But uh, I really need to work on that a little bit and see how well they shoot. Lost stringer. Huh. I've never seen anything from Wasp for a uh, band tying. It's like a band tying jig, Dave. Let me know. I absolutely love the Beagle from Prime Fork Catapults, though. That's uh, one of my one of my top frames. Super comfortable to shoot. I got a really nice one too. He made me a he made me a custom one uh, with black G10 and uh, yellow liners. The thing's freaking awesome. Love that love that frame. I've got a few a uh, few frames from Wasp. I've got the the Venator, which I absolutely love. It's probably one of my favorites, or it is one of my favorites. I also have the FTC. I think that's what it is. And I haven't done the video on that thing yet, but let me tell you, that thing is an awesome slingshot. It's kind of designed after the uh, John Jeffries Mustang. What a beautiful little frame! Well, you guys all know what it is, I'm sure, but. Let me tell you, that thing shoots something fierce. I love that frame. I'm hoping to get my hands on one of those John Jeffries Mustangs someday soon. They're a little bit pricey with the exchange right here in Canada, but uh, let me tell you, that guy does some great work. He posted one up on his page the other day. It was uh, 
it was a, a Mustang with a, some carbon fiber and red G10. Man, was it gorgeous. If you guys would like to see some speed tests on TheraBand, I'd be happy to do it. I've got a little bit lying around here. <laughs> yeah, right. Romany Custom. Let me tell you, that's a dream frame for me, and uh, it's going to probably remain a dream. It's a little bit on the expensive side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I asked I asked about one of them, and, uh, and I think the price, the price that I had heard about was something like uh, – 400 euro or 400 pounds or something like that. I was like, holy crap. That's like 600 Canadian or more. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, not even on the best day. I can, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll have to get the, I'll have to put my kid to work. That's it, boy. Get to work. He's going to be making me clay, clay bullets all, uh, clay uh, <laughs> targets all day long. No, nah, I don't think I've, uh, I don't think I've done one on TheraBand yet. I got to, I'm going to have to do a speed test on one of those. It'd be pretty cool, pretty interesting. I heard they're really, really bad in wintertime, though, in the cold that we have up here. So I'll have to uh, – maybe I'll wait until summertime and do that just so we can see what the summertime speeds are on those fellas. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, a lot of people shit on TheraBand, and uh, I've done some shooting with it uh, on my other Nick uh, Hagerty uh, frame I have. It's the uh, the SS4 in that uh, – that it's like a black plastic one. I should probably do a video on that uh, for, for – um, for good good budget frames, but uh, I'll tell you, I I shot really well with it. It was a really really nice draw. I liked it. Yeah, I'll do it on the gold. That's that's the theraband I have here. So maybe I'll do a speed test on that once uh, once it warms up a little bit. I don't think there's a band on the planet right now that's going to do well in minus twenty eight. <laughs> oh guys we've been at it for an hour already that's that's crazy i can't believe you guys would want to see my ugly mug for that long it's a good thing i have the camera pointed down You know what, Steve? I think I agree with you, bud. The uh, yeah, minus 28 with the wind chill. I think uh, probably one of my favorite shooters that I have is, uh, or one of my best shooters that I have is that um, that frame that I made the uh, that um, that frame that I made. It was basically a, a, a custom um, shit. I can't even remember what it's called now. That one that uh, the Fowler made there, the Sparrow. Yeah, it's a, a custom version of the Sparrow. I carved that guy out, and it's probably probably one of my best shooters. Really comfortable. Shoots right, really nice.
So I'm going to be doing that uh, that band test pretty soon um, for heavier ammo. I have some 7.16s lying around here. And uh, if you guys have any ideas of what tapers you would like to see tested, uh, I'm going to be doing three tapers. So if you guys uh, are interested in trying out some tapers, the, the three most popular ones that I get uh, down in the comments here, I'm going to go ahead and test those out. If you guys are interested in seeing some, uh, some heavy band tapers tested out for speed. And I'll be using heavy bands too. It'll either be, uh, I have GNOL uh, 70, uh, 0.70, and I have, uh, I just received uh, the Great White from Caddyshack in 0 0.80. So if you guys want to see some uh, heavy ammo tests, let me know and uh, put down those tapers you want to see. Twenty-two fourteen. Yeah, we could try that. Twenty-five, twenty for Great White. Yeah, I can imagine how fast that's going to be, man. I got to tell you, too, for those of you who haven't tried Great White and you're kind of reluctant on trying a heavier band, the draw on Great White is beautiful for a heavy band. The draw on GNOL is horrible. It's terrible. It's super, super stiff, but man, are they fast. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to test those two out. But we'll, de we'll definitely do the uh, the three bands, the three tapers again, and we'll see how they uh, how they turn out. Should be a lot of fun. Have you guys tried Great White yet? I could probably do the, you know what, the TheraBand? When I do the TheraBand, I'm going to do them with a heavier ammo. I know a lot of a lot of you guys over in the UK like to hunt with that band. I'm going to do a test on that. I do have the uh, the simple shot torque that I haven't shown you guys yet. Uh, you all know it, but uh, that'll take a really stupid band on there too. I can get like a, I can get a thirty fifteen on there, no problem. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know if it's going to cost you much power, but it may cost you some speed. Where can you buy what? Oh, if you're talking about the Caddyshack um, a Great White, you can buy it from, uh, from Caddyshack Catapults. You check those out. GNOL, the only place I've ever found that has that is um, the only place I've ever found that has that is um, is a uh, slingshooting.com and they're all out. Oh, buddy, Caddyshack Catapults, I'm telling you, Great White, something special. Yeah, kind of. It does look like that old Red Precise. Hey, thanks for stopping in, Steve. Take it easy, brother. Brother. Yeah, bud. Rad. Sorry, bead. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, I just uh, got my great white with the bullet pouch, and let me tell you, those bullet pouches are something special. I would like to see Caddyshack come out with a smaller one like that too.
Yeah, but you know what though? The great great white is the, the draw on that. I don't find it as bad as uh as some other ones that I've had. I find it I find it lighter than than uh precise 0.70 cold weather. I find it's got a nicer draw than that, and it's got a way better draw than GO GNOL. It's got some serious speed on it too, man. Fantastic dance. I love them. I was messing around in my in my basement shooting uh shooting at the little catch box and uh I shot it with everything with with a with a few different tapers but I even went down to eight mil steel with it and I was shooting uh shooting that with it and it was I was super super accurate and the draw on it was beautiful. Hey take it easy Phil thanks for stopping in brother Yeah, man, I tried sniper sling. I'll be doing a video on them pretty soon. I've got uh, 0.5 and 0.6. I'm going to be uh, doing speed tests on. I'll be releasing that video uh, hopefully by the end of the week. Oh, sniper thing's nice, man. I really like that band of drawn. It's beautiful. I've also been testing out. Uh, I've been testing out um, BSB yellow too. BSB yellow is pretty nice. I like it much better than the white for some reason. And I don't know if that camera's picking up. Can you hear the wind out there today? Ooh. Yeah, me too, man. BSB, it just fails on me all the time. Uh, I've had a weird breaks on it, and uh, and I find the longevity, and it's just just not really good. I know a lot of people sing its praises, but uh, it's not for me. It's true, eh, brother? Those that the GNOL has got a serious draw on it, but it's it's real fast. It's real fast. I did some shooting with GNOL, actually, some pretty good shooting on one of my overnighters. We were uh, out camping, and I was hitting uh, hitting a thirty mil a thirty mil flipper that I had screwed into a tree, and uh, it was hitting the flipper so hard they were bouncing back and almost hitting me. It was crazy. Yep, I like GZK orange too. I like it much better. To, uh, I much much prefer orange to green. I'm not so sure it's as fast, but I think I'm going to be testing those out anyway. I have a couple. Uh, I think I have 0.62 or 0.54 in green and orange. I think I'm going to try those out and see how it goes. Do a comparison between the two. Thing is, I find a lot of people are getting hung up on the speeds only and. Uh, let me tell you, it all comes down to what you can shoot accurately. And uh, if, a, if a draw is too stiff or, and too hard, you're not going to be able to shoot it all that well or all that accurately anyway. So you might be better off going for one with a better draw and slightly less speed, and uh, you'll do much better shooting.
Yeah, as long as your as long as your ammo and your balls flying down there straight, and uh, you're not getting too much drop off at the distance you're shooting, then you're fine. I don't think I don't think you need to have all that all that crazy that crazy speed. I don't think you need it. Just my opinion. <clears throat> right, I guess we'll get a couple more big ones in here, then we'll. Then we'll stop making these things. I'm running out of table here. Brother K, I got to tell you, man, that last video that you popped up there where you shot those two... Uh, those two um, bottle caps from that distance there, that 20, 22 meters or 20 meters or whatever, that was a fantastic shot, dude. That was crazy. That was amazing. Speaking of trick shots, did anybody, any of you guys uh, follow um, uh, Hunter, Hunter, uh, you know, shooting with Hunter, shooting with Hunter? Anyway, he did a, he, he did a video where he had his catch box at the back with a tube going around like this and it came out and he ended up shooting it into the tube, went all the way around the tube, came out and shot an egg. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that video, but it was, it was really cool. You got to check that out. Hey, take it easy, Dave. Thanks for stopping in, man. I appreciate you, brother. Alrighty, folks. Sorry, folks. It's been uh, an hour and a half. We've been at this. I think we're going to wrap this up. I'm running out of table, but I'm going to be back again Thursday for another one of these feeds here. I uh, hope you guys will join me. I got to I got to do uh, a little show and tell for you guys, and I got an announcement to make. So uh, I think we're going to wrap this guy up. I hope you guys take care. I'll see you again soon. I freaking love you guys. You're awesome. And uh, thanks for joining me for a beer. I had a good time. It was a lot of fun. If you want to do more of these, let me know, and I'll try to slip one in at least once a week. Take care. All right, guys. I'm out.